This morning, let's turn to God's word. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, and I'll read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, two scriptures. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. And Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions, and with, all the f- with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with wine. I'll just stay with that. Well, we are talking about financial and material prosperity, a very important aspect for Christian living. And I'm showing you very clearly from God's word how God prospers you financially. I believe that as a believer, you should not be ignorant of God's ways because if you are ignorant of God's ways, then in every aspect that you are ignorant, you will never be blessed. That is why the scripture says, for the lack of knowledge, my people perish, not for anything else, not lack of money, lack of food, no, no, lack of knowledge about God, not of lack of knowledge about what he has done in them and through them. So this is the problem with believers. They get saved. But after they get saved, they don't know what has happened to them. They don't understand this new life. They don't understand the new power that they have, that God is now living in them. And that is what we actually preach and teach here all through the year. What is in you? What has happened in you? So you should not be ignorant. Eh? God in his word reveals and teaches very clearly how he does things for us. Anything, when you want anything from God, God teaches how to receive it. For example, let's say you want to pray. You want to know how to pray and get answers from God. The Bible teaches. You, you cannot pray any way and every way and get answers. No. The Bible teaches very clearly how you need to come to God. And when you come to God, you need to come on faith. And not only that, you need to come on the basis of his promises. You need to know his word. You need to know his will. And when you ask according to the word and the will, then only you will receive that. So anything you want to receive from God, you have to learn from the word. So that is why the Bible is so important. And I am showing you from scripture how God prospers you financially and materially. You should not uh, be ignorant and think God will somehow prosper me financially. God will somehow bless me financially. No, my friend. He will not somehow do things for you. He will do things according to the scripture, how he has revealed in scripture here. So we looked at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. I showed you God has several ways to prosper us financially. And the first way that we looked at is Proverbs 10, 22, where it says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes one truly rich. He adds no sorrow to it, and neither does toiling increase it. Now, it's very plain, very simple. You don't need an MBA to understand that. <laughs> eh? It says the blessing of God prospers a person. It's not talking about your MBA degree, not talking about your sweat and your hard work and your smartness and shrewdness and uh, cunningness and all that. No, no, it's talking about God's power in the life of a believer that propels him for success, that makes him to come on top in life then. So that is what it is. We looked at it in great detail. Then the second way God prospers us is through the covenant. I showed you how God established a covenant with man and there are many blessings promised in the covenant and one of the blessings is financial and material prosperity. Then thirdly, we looked at the laws of prosperity. I showed you every law, the spiritual and the natural laws are being established by God and they are established to teach us to convey to us something. I told you of everything actually the whole universe speaks to us. It declares and tells us something about God and the way he has ordered things to be there. So we looked at seed time and harvest time, sowing and reaping. And I showed you how these principles have been established to teach us about financial and material prosperity. See, these are just principles that talks about abundance. How to get abundance, how to get more or whatever you want. You want something? You just have little of that and you want much more of that. You want abundance of that. So these principles teach us how to get much more, how to get abundance, how to get a harvest of whatever we want there. So that is what we were looking at. And then finally we came to the tithe, prosperity through tithe. So I showed you how God has ordained the tithe there. It should be set apart. It's holy. It does not belong to you. It belongs to God. 
And uh, last week I began to share with you how tithe is the heart test for every believer. <laughs> God put tithe to test our heart eh, so that to show us where our heart is, whether we really love God with all of our heart or we love money more. That is why God has ordained tithe. There are many other reasons, but this is one of the reasons. It has been ordained there and put in the church here as a test for every believer. And uh, God wants every believer to pass this test. It's not a complicated test where you have to spend three hours and write a whole exam. <laughs> eh? It's just believing his word and obeying what the word does. So simple it is. Very easy. It just takes one minute to finish it or one moment to finish it. Eh? So God has appointed a tithe in the church as a test to show us where our heart is. Whether we really love God with all of our heart or we really love money more than God. Now I told you God is not interested just in lip service and mouth service. God always looks at the inside. He's interested in the heart. Because the heart is the central personality of man. That is the real you. Eh? The heart is the real you. When we talk about spirit, soul and body, we will talk about these things in great detail there. But uh, this is why God ordained it there. He put it there to show you where your heart is. And that is why I read Matthew chapter 6 verse 21. It says there, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Eh? So in other words, God is saying, you want to know where your heart is, whether you really love me more or you love money more. All you have to do is, Take Matthew 6.21 and apply it to yourself and see where all your money is going in, where major part of your income is going in. Now this is serious, isn't it? So he says, here, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So if you want to know where your heart is, whether you really love God more or money more, all you have to do is see where your money is in what you're investing more with, and that will show you where your heart is there. And not only that, I also showed you that God is such a good God. Tithing was not only kept as a test for the believer, but tithing is also something that has been ordained by God. And it is the only area in which God invites the believer also to test him. See, God not only tests you, <laughs> he's a good God, he's not partial. <laughs> he's, he puts a test, test for you. And he also says, now you can test me also in this. In fact, all through the Bible, if you read, this is the only place where God says, you can test me, prove me, try me and see. And then he goes on to talk about something else will a child come to. He says, he will curse the devourer for us. He will curse the devourer. That means the devil. <laughs> it's amazing that that's the only place where God says he will do it. In all the other places, I spoke on faith, I spoke on authority of the believer. You are supposed to do it. <laughs> you are supposed to tell Satan to take his hands off. If he touches you in any way, you have all the right and he has to obey when you speak to him in the name of Jesus. But this is the only place where God says, I will rebuke the devourer. That means I will rebuke Satan who actually devours your finances, who takes away your money that you earn there, who eats it up. Only place where God says it. We'll come to that. But uh, this is the only place where God also invites the believer. Why? Because he doesn't want you to be double-minded. He doesn't want you to be unstable. He wants you to come to a conclusion. He wants you to decide, to know whether God is, you love God more or whether you love money more. So that is why he says, if you don't believe it, he says, prove me or try me. The NIV version says, test me and see. So he says, don't falter between two opinions. Come to a conclusion. So not only God has put it so that he will test our hearts to see where our hearts are, but he's also invited every believer to test him and to see whether if he will not hope in the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing that we will have no room to receive and he will not fill our barns with plenty. So we looked at all this last week. Today, let's go further. Today, I want to show you that it takes faith to tithe, <laughs> to give the first and the best 10% of all your increase is not easy. Sometimes preachers don't, they don't understand it. They think it's very easy. Yeah? Some preachers I know scratch their head and they wonder why believers don't give time. They're supposed to give. If they don't give, they're robbing God. You know, they, they just pluck their hair and they're wondering why. Yeah? Sometimes they look at the rich and they say, well, this person is so rich. And they get mad. Why is he not giving them? 
they don't understand certain things they don't understand the bible eh? so if you understand the bible you understand everything and i want to show you today that tithing is not an easy thing whether you are poor whether you you know you, whether you are rich whatever it is it doesn't matter i want to show you that it takes faith to tithe if you do not have faith you will never tithe whether you are rich or poor whether you have more than enough not enough or even just enough all these things don't matter i want to establish this truth to you today i want to show you this from the scripture that unless and otherwise a person really has faith in god and god's word when he trust god and god's word whatever god's word says only then he will tithe whether poor or rich if he doesn't believe god if he doesn't trust god and god's word he will never tithe i want to show you that from scripture so before that let me just tell you the definition of faith now if you have missed our series on the teaching of faith faith is a very important subject because when you understand that you will understand things <laughs> and sometimes we will look at the problems and the sickness and the lack and the want and you know they think this is how they're going to be for the rest of the life Yeah? so you need to listen to the series of teaching but in that i gave you a definition for faith the simplest definition for faith is it is not just believing god and his word or not just trusting god and his word it is believing god and his word and acting upon what you believe that is faith faith is incomplete only by believing see this is where a lot of christians miss out on all the blessings of god when it comes to healing eh, when it comes to you know a uh, blessing of uh, tithes and everything they miss it out because they only fulfill the first part that means many of them believe <laughs> yeah? they believe god for healing they believe god to bless them when they give tithe but believing is not faith believing is only just part of it it has it's not completed yet that is not complete faith so faith the simplest definition is believing god's word and acting upon whatever god's word says that may shock some of you but that is exactly what faith is because if you go to james chapter 2 verse 19 i'm just going to quote it it says that even the demons believe that there is one god can you imagine that <laughs> yeah even the demons they know very well that there is only one god they believe in god but i want to ask you a question are they saved <laughs> Is the devil saved? Is Satan saved? Is Antichrist saved? No, he's not saved. You'll never get saved. So faith is not only believing. See, a lot of Christian people they believe. They believe that God heals. They believe that when they tithe, God will bless them. They believe in tithing. But the thing is, they don't act upon what they believe, and that is where they miss out on the blessings of God. And I tell you, my friend, if you want to experience God's word in your life. if you want god's word to become true in your life then you not have to believe but you have to go beyond believing in doing what the word says i experienced it in my life you know when i first went uh, got saved and went to aft chennai and started attending church there i started to hear teaching about you know believers authority how you you can lay hands upon a sick even if you're a believer you can lay hands upon the sick and they will be healed now i listen to this this sounded so wonderful there but the thing is i just didn't believe it eh? i went and experimented we went to many places there we went to housing boards on the streets and we had meetings there and i began to you know after preaching the gospel i began to lay hands upon the sick and only when i laid hands upon the sick i saw people healed only then i knew god's word is true only then and i experienced god's word in my life See, only believing will not change you any way. It will not do any good to you. Just like the demons, <laughs> they have not changed in any way. So faith is doesn't stop with believing. Believing is the first step. It's good because when you hear God's word, it produces faith, and you begin to believe it. But you must go beyond that and act upon God's word. It is only when you act upon the word that you see the manifestation of God's power working in our life through His word. That. you begin to see god's word fulfilled in your life so that is why faith is believing and acting upon whatever god says that is exactly what faith is so i want to show you now because you may ask how, how is that connected to tithe what i want to show you that unless you believe god and believe his word you will never tithe whether you are poor or rich you will never tithe <laughs> 
See, preachers don't understand it. And that is why sometimes they get mad at people. I know some, some of them abuse people, scold people. <laughs> they say, you have money for everything else except God. <laughs> well, because they don't understand that unless a person has faith in God, unless a person really believes in God and trust in God and trust his word. See, you, if to trust in God is to trust his word. To believe in God is to believe in his word. So unless a person has faith in God and has faith in the word, only then he will give. If not, he will never give. You can scold him, you can abuse him, you can do whatever, you can even beat him also. He will never give. The more you are against him, the more he will rebel. I want to show you that. It takes faith to give. Without faith, you cannot give. That is why I always say, you must give your heart to God first. Your heart to God first. That is what Paul says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he talks about you know how they gave liberally. Eh? They gave not only according to their ability, even beyond their ability they gave. And he says, that's fine, that is good. But then he says, more than this, I plead that you give your heart to God first. That's wonderful, isn't it? You need to give your heart first to God. You need to give your life to God. Because when you give your heart to God and you trust God with your life, then only you can trust God with your money. How many of you have given your life to God? Have you given your life to God? You give in? You trust him with your life? Yes, my friend. You have trusted him with your life. Then what is your money? Your money is nothing, isn't it? <laughs> you have given your life to God. You have committed your life to him. You are trusting him with your life. In the same way, you begin to trust God in your finances also. So I want to show you that. How unless you have faith, only then you can give. If you don't have faith, if you don't trust God, with your heart, if you don't believe his word, whether you are rich or poor, you'll never give it the first and the best 10% of all your increase. It's not easy to give. I understand that. So let's go to scripture. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. I'll read verse 1 and verse 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever opens the Whatever opens the womb of man and beast, it is mine. So here we see that God is speaking to Moses and uh, commanding the people of Israel. And he says, uh, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. I told you the word consecrate means to separate because it is holy. So here God is saying, separate the firstborn. Whether, you know, whatever opens the womb of man or beast in the entire nation of Israel, he says. The firstborn belongs to God. That is what he says there in verse 2. Now, as you come down to verse 11, I'll read from verse 11 to 13 now. We'll see the principle further stated here. Uh, sometimes when you read uh, verses 11 to 13, you may not understand it. That's why it needs some explanation. So verse 11, And it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you that you shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb and that is every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have and the males shall be the Lord's. And verse 13, But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb and if you will not redeem it then you shall break its neck. And all the firstborn of man among your sons shall you redeem or shall be redeemed. Now you may be wondering what's happening here. <laughs> and especially if you have an old King James version, you'll be more confused about it. But don't worry about it. I'll just tell you what God is saying here, what these scriptures mean. Here it's talking about the principle, the principle of the firstborn. Now every word is important there, I told you, in uh, Exodus 13, 2 and uh, Exodus 13, verse 12 and 13. Now in verse 2, Exodus 13, 2, it says there, consecrate, that means separate to me. Then it says, all the firstborn, not part of it, not some of it, all the firstborn, that means every firstborn has to be separated, it has to be set apart, that opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast. So the firstborn of man and every beast there is to be set apart for God. He says it is mine. You don't touch it. You just keep it apart. It's holy, separated there. 
and here in verse 12 and 13 is further expounding that principle here and he's establishing a principle what is the principle according to the old testament law the firstborn was either to be sacrificed or redeemed that is what we read here from verses 12 and 13 as you read uh, right up till uh, 15 and 16 is it is uh, explained there but this is the principle that has been established here it is very simple i simplified it for you it's talking about the principle of the firstborn how the firstborn it either has to be sacrificed or redeemed there there was no third option, only two things. One is, it has to be sacrificed or it has to be redeemed. So that is what we read there. Now, you take this literally and apply it to what God says now in Exodus 13.2. He says, all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb, the nation of Israel, of man and beast belongs to me. That means, in simple words he's saying, when anything is born, whatever is born first, that belongs to God. Now, I told you, in those days, it was an agricultural world. So, when people tithed, it, this is what they tithed. In. They brought the firstborn of, of the lamb, the firstborn of the oxen, the fruit, eh, uh, the grains, and all this. They never brought cash. That time, they didn't, I told you, trade in cash. This is how people traded. Eh? They traded by exchanging goods there. You give one good and you take something else. So, that is why you'll find Old Testament language like this. So, how does it apply to us today? It applies to us in money today. They use goods. So, that is why in the Old Testament, you will find, God says, bring all the firstborn, the, the animals. Then he says, bring all the grain, bring all the fruits there. Eh? The first produce, he says, bring it there. But today, we don't use all that for, uh, you know, exchanging or for trading there. In those days, this is what people use there. They use it as a commodity to exchange and trade for something else that. So that is why it says in that language. But today you have to bridge the gap. We have something that is called bridging the gap. That means we need to take something that was spoken thousands of years before and apply it to today's situation and circumstances. What it will mean today to us. How it will speak today. What is God speaking to me today? What is he saying to me through these scriptures which he spoke thousands of years back to the people of Israel? How does he speak to me today? What does it say to me today? That is what is called bridging the gap. So today we don't use goods like that. In the villages it is still practice. You know, I preached in the villages. I even pastored the church in the village there. And there, you know, people bring eggs. <laughs> when the hen lays eggs first, they bring the eggs. They bring the chickens. They bring the goats. They bring everything. <laughs> the cows and the buffaloes and, you know, the grain and the fruits. They bring everything off the land. This is how they tithed in those days. But today... We use money as currency. Money is a currency that we use to buy anything or exchange anything. I told you, you don't go to work in an IT company, eh, work 31 days there, and then they send you 10 bags of rice. <laughs> no. They give you money. They give you a nice salary there because that is a commodity that we use to buy or to trade there today. So, when it's talking about all these things, it needs to be understood in terms of money. But first, let us take the principle that has been stated here, the firstborn. See, according to God's law, it says it's a law there. And he says, whatever opens the womb of animal or a man, it belongs to God. So the firstborn belongs to God. Now, let's take an animal. Let's say a lamb gives birth. The moment it gives birth, the very first lamb that you get, the first thing that it produces, you have to take it and set it apart and give, give it to God. Now, the question is, if you have to take that and set it apart, because God said the firstborn belongs to God. If you have to take that lamb that has been born, and if you had to set it apart and sacrifice it to God and give it to God as a sacrifice there, you need faith. <laughs> you know why? Because you don't know whether it will produce more lambs or what. You don't know. Maybe that's the only lamb it will give birth to. May not produce after that. May not give birth to more. So that is why the moment it gave birth to take the firstborn and to give it needs faith. Why? Because when you take it and give it, you are showing that you really have faith in God and in his word. You have nothing else. 
you have no guarantee you have no assurance except god's word and god's promise that when you obey his word and do whatever his word says then you'll be blessed so you have nothing else except god's word and god's promise so that is why without faith you cannot take that first born and give it because you're not sure whether that it will produce more it'll give birth to more or it will not give birth you cannot say sometimes they'll only give birth to one after that you may not get <laughs> so if you do not have faith in god and if you do not have faith in his word then this is what you will think why should i take this first born and give it to god what if it does not give birth what if i don't get more <laughs> what if it just stays with this one then if i take this one and only and give it i will lose even what i have see people think tithing is easy i show you my friend tithing is not easy you will never tithe unless you really have faith in god and in his word so it was not easy for a person you know especially when a lamb gave birth to take the first born and go and offer it to god as a sacrifice it was not easy because he had only the promise of god he had only god's word that's all so he had to believe god he had to have trust in god and god's word and only then he will offer the first born if he does not believe and trust god with his heart and if he does not trust god's word he will never offer the first born because he doesn't know whether it will produce more or no see it's not easy it takes faith so that this is why the principle is stated here in the old testament here so even before you see more even before the flood gates of heaven could open unto you even before your barns could be filled first to give you have only one thing is the promise of god you simply add god's word that's all it is based upon god's word that you give and that is why if you do not have faith in god and in his word it's very difficult to give now you're getting it i think so it takes faith to give it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor whether you have just enough or more than enough all these things don't matter what matters is if your heart is in god if you really love god with all of your heart mind and soul if you love god then you will love his word and if you love his word you will do what the word says because that is what faith is faith is not just loving god faith is loving god and obeying god and doing whatever his word says that is what faith is turn with me to one more scripture matthew i'll show you this principle i want i want to establish this truth today that it takes faith to tithe doesn't matter whether you're rich poor over they have you know just enough more than enough or not enough all those things don't matter what matters is faith if you have faith you will tithe if you don't have faith in god and god's word you will not tithe naturally you'll be filled with fear because you are afraid that even what you have you will lose <laughs> you're not sure that when you give you will get it back matthew chapter 16 verse 25 Matthew chapter 16 verse 25 For whoever desires to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it or keep it <laughs> Or you may be wondering what Jesus is saying here Well he's talking about the same principle Jesus is echoing the same principle here Here the only difference is he's talking about your life but the principle is same first i'll talk about this then i'll take it and apply it to finances so what is he saying here he's saying here whoever loves his life and keeps his life for himself what will happen he will lose it so if you love your life if you keep your life for yourself jesus is saying ultimately what will happen you will lose your life and then he says whoever loses his life for my sake will find it or will keep it now i want to ask you a question do you, have you given your life to god yes and after you gave your life to god has it become better or worse <laughs> has it become better i'll show you the principle you know what jesus is saying here 
the simple principle is this he is saying whatever now forget about life whatever you give to god is never lost <laughs> that's the principle here see when you read the bible you need to understand what the bible is saying what is it talking about so jesus is talking here about a principle he is establishing a principle it can be applied to anything here so he is saying here whatever is given to god is never lost now you have given your life to god isn't it have you lost anything <laughs> or has it become better now i tell you my friend after you give your life to god you gain everything <laughs> that is why the bible says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul god places immense value upon your soul your soul is more important than all the wealth and the treasures in this world there so that is what he's saying here i remember the time that i gave my life to god and as i look back it i thank god that i gave my life to him i trusted him with my life because from that day till today i found that my life every day is getting better and better and better there's a wonderful song that we used to sing before every day with jesus is better than the day before <laughs> that's true my friend that is what the christian life is that is what the christian life is every day my life gets better and better and better so that is the principle jesus is stating he says anything whatever is given to god whatever is entrusted into god you know what he does it is not lost he takes it he blesses it and he makes it into something wonderful and that is what he has done with your life and my life from the day that you have chosen to trust him with your life god has taken you put your life in him you trust him with your life and he has taken it and from that day onwards you look at from that day till today you will find that life has gotten better and better and better and better am i right or am i wrong so that's the principle whatever is given to god is never lost but then you reverse that let's say you don't give your life to god you keep it for yourself you know what jesus says you lose it <laughs> that's what happens to many people they don't want to trust god with their life they don't have faith in god they don't believe that when they give their life to god that god will take it and make it wonderful and you know make them a great blessing they don't believe it they just keep it they don't want to give their life they don't want to trust their life to god and you know what happens ultimately they lose it so that is the principle that jesus is teaching here whatever is withheld from god is lost you try to hold back something from god whether your life or whether your money it's lost can you imagine that that is why malachi talks about how when you keep back the 10% you actually literally enter into a curse we'll come to that how can i be cursed when the bible says i've been redeemed from the curse galatians paul talks about it some people don't believe in that but i'll show you when when we come to that but this is the thing whatever you withhold from god it's lost So when you withhold the 10%, the first and the best, everything is lost. Not only the 10%, even the 90% it also is lost. But when you honor God with the first and the best 10% of all your increase, then the rest is redeemed. That's the principle there. There are only two options. The first born has to be sacrificed or it has to be redeemed. There is no third option there. So same way with the money also. whatever is withheld is lost but whatever whatever is taken and given to god is blessed so jesus also echoes this principle there in matthew chapter 16 verse 25 so that is why i told you it takes faith to tithe so in the old testament when an animal gives birth okay, and uh, he gets the first born there the first born has to be sacrificed and it will never be sacrificed unless the person really believes god and god's word see all we have is god's promise god's word that that is all we have nothing else we have god's word and god's promise god says the first born is mine take the first and the best and sacrifice to me and the rest will be redeemed so we have only god's word and god's promise so to take that first born and to sacrifice needs faith because you don't know whether more will come or not so you simply believe god's word and whatever he said and you sacrifice it so when you take that lamb that has been born to sacrifice this is what you say god i trust you 
I trust your word. I believe in you with all of my heart and I believe with your word. And that is why, just as you have commanded me, I am taking this firstborn. I don't know whether it will produce more or not. But your word says to bring the firstborn, it belongs to you. And when I give that, when I sacrifice that, the rest is redeemed. That means I only have your word and your promise and I am believing your word and I am acting upon your promise. And that is why I am taking this first and the best and sacrificing to you because I know when I do that, I will get more because your word promises it. If you don't have faith in God and his God's word, you cannot do it, my friend, because you're afraid. You know what you're afraid? You have only one. <laughs> you may lose this also. Why take the risk? Let's keep it. <laughs> it takes faith to tithe. Turn with me to one more scripture, Leviticus. Chapter 27 and verse 30, three zeros. Chapter 27, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Now we've been talking about the principle of the firstborn from Exodus chapter 13, 2 and verse 12 and 13 here. Now here it talks about tithe. It says bring all the tithe into God's storehouse. And even Malachi says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse of God. And see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that you'll have no room to contain it. Now, many preachers, you know what they say? <laughs> they say, well, it all depends upon people. It's not about faith, it's about people. You know, when people have just enough or when they have more than enough, then they will tithe. Some of the preachers say this. You know, some people believe this. Not only preachers, even believers, they say. I've known people who have just enough. And uh, this is what they say. If I only have more than enough, just little more, if God blesses me with little more, because what I have is just sufficient for all my needs and all my bills. No, I just can't tithe because what I get is sufficient for all my payments there. So if God blesses me with just little more, then I will tithe. I will take the 10% and give. And I tell you, my friend, God will bless you with little more, not even little more, much more, but you will never tithe. <laughs> you know why? Because you say, if I get little more, I will tithe. But you know what the Bible says? You know what God says? God knows you and me better than, you know, we know ourselves. Thank God I understood that many years ago. Sometimes I was confused about myself. <laughs> One time I will like something, another time I will hate it. <laughs> I don't know why. But thank God I understood one thing. Even though I may not understand myself at times, I know that God understands me more than myself because he is my creator. He is the one who fashioned me. He is the one who designed me. He is the one who made me. He knows everything about me. And that is why he knows me better than I know myself. I hope you learned that lesson also. It has changed my life tremendously after I understood that. So, this is what many people say. If I only have little more, then I will tithe. Well, I'll tell you, God will bless you not with little more, but even with much more and you will not tithe. You may ask on what basis you may make that statement. I make it based on the basis of God's word. Because you know what God's word says? It says, whoever is faithful in little will be faithful in much. When God entrusts you with little, and if you're not faithful in that little, then you'll never be faithful, even if God blesses you with much. Eh? See, God's word is always true. That is why the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Let every man be a liar, and only God is true. Eh? See, somehow people, you know, they think, eh? preachers even say this, many preachers, I heard them telling this, you know, they say, well, the problem is they don't give is because they don't have enough. If they have just enough or more than enough, if they have excess, little more, then definitely they will give. Well, that is exactly what I'm trying to show you. Even if you have just enough or if you have more than enough, you will never give because the Bible is very clear. It takes faith to give. 
if you don't have faith in god and god's word you will never give even if you are blessed with more than enough because the more you have the more the 10% you know escalates <laughs> and you begin to calculate because you know 10% goes very high now you are calculating well it's gone up so much i can do so many things with it <laughs> sometimes even preachers don't get it they think if people have just enough they will tithe no my friend some say if they have more than enough they will tithe no no whether they have just enough or they have not enough or whether they have more than enough in every situation it takes faith for a person to give a person needs to trust god he needs to trust god's word with all of the heart and then only he can give if not he will never be able to give because according to him if he does not believe god and does not believe god's word then even what he gives is gone that's what he thinks <laughs> he loses the 10% he thinks he thinks he is minus of 10% so it's wrong to say if you have just enough or more than enough that you will give no it takes faith when a person has faith in god when a person trust god and believes in god with all of his heart and when he knows god's word is true only then he'll give because he knows when he gives the rest is redeemed when he gives the first 10 portion the 98 is redeemed that is blessed he understands it yeah. so it doesn't matter whether you are poor rich or whether you have or don't have all these things don't matter what matters is whether you have faith in god if you have faith in god and in his word then only you'll give if not you'll never give so it takes faith to give whether you have just enough or more than enough but i tell you it takes more faith to give when you don't have enough <laughs> see when you have just enough and more than enough even then it takes faith to give but when you don't have enough when you have lack when you have insufficiency when your bills are more than what you get on hand your income when your expenses are more than your income that time i tell you my friend it takes more faith to give than when you have just enough and more than enough because whatever money you get is not sufficient to pay your bills and as the days go by the bills are getting you know the length of it is getting more and more before only the provision bill will be long <laughs> you know when they write the provision bill they'll buy things only for a month every month they will buy provision so the provision bill used to be a long list there but today all the expenses are becoming a long list you have to pay your provision bill you have to pay your house rent you have to pay you know your current you have to pay your water bill if in a family if you have five people there five of them have cell phones today you have to pay five bills there <laughs> you have to pay for clothes for them you take five of them and go shopping and see eh? i mean there's a whole list of things that you have to do and just imagine you are getting income here and your income is absolutely not sufficient to pay even the bills that you have you have to pay so many bills bills are pending there so it's not sufficient the money that you have in hand is not sufficient to pay your bills how will a person give 10% because 10% means a lot at that time i tell you my friend it takes faith it takes faith if you do not have faith in god and god's word you'll never tithe especially when you're living in lack and want and insufficiency when what you get on hand is not sufficient to pay the bills the bills are much more bigger than what you get on hand when you're in that situation and crisis that it is very difficult to tie that because 10% will mean so much to you i told you money is life nobody gives you money for free anybody getting money here for free <laughs> no it's your life you go you work so hard and they pay you there it doesn't come free it's your sweat that you know you that you earn it nobody gives it to you for nothing <laughs> if you know any employment like that anybody is taking on please tell me i'll do at least a part time job there <laughs> where i can just go sit in the ac and get a thick cover every month <laughs> money is a life eh? we invest time we work so many hours and then only we are paid 31 days every day from morning to evening you have to work so many hours and on the 31st day end only they pay you they don't pay you initially <laughs> 
they are smart people <laughs> they know if they pay you initially you'll abscond <laughs> so that is why they say you work 31 days and then on the 31st evening you get your salary there <laughs> so money is our life money is a very important thing in this universe if you don't have money you know very well you cannot get along in life you cannot go to school you cannot have educate your child you know you cannot do anything for the family so money is very important it's a life it's a very essential thing today anything you want to buy you need money you want food you want to buy food you need money you want to buy clothes you need money you want to stay in a good house you need money okay? so 10% will mean quite a lot to a person who has lack and want and insufficiency when he has so much of bill spending and the money that he has in hand is not even sufficient to meet those bills eh? the amount that he has is not sufficient to pay those bills it will only meet half his bills still half bills will be pending there so in such a situation and crisis i tell you it takes more faith in god and god's word to really tie in a situation like that because he has bills he has so much to pay there and now he has to decide whether he really trusts god and believes god with all of his heart so when he takes the 10% and when he brings it to god the first and the best i tell you it shows that he has faith in god and god's word because he knows what he knows that when he takes the first and the best and he gives it according to god's word that the 90% that he has even though it may look little but god's hand of blessing will be upon that and that every need will be met and every bill will be paid and not only that he knows that the moment you know he gives it he has god's word god has promised him what god has promised him that when he brings the first and the best 10% that the 90% is redeemed the rest of it is redeemed and besides that not only that god will open the flood gates of heaven and shower a blessing upon him that he will have no room to receive it and his bonds will be filled with plenty he knows it he understands it and that is why in spite of having so many bills to pay and money is not sufficient he takes that 10% and sets it aside because it is holy it belongs to god and he knows that god is true and god's word is true and god is always faithful to his word and promises see it takes faith to give if you do not have faith you will never give my friend i don't know from where people get this idea that if you are rich people will give <laughs> i know many pastors have been disappointed because they always look to the rich <laughs> and then they wonder why they are not giving some of them scold them many people who come here in the first service they have come to me and they told me that <laughs> they said we have been scolding for not giving <laughs> preachers don't understand it it takes faith to give my friend when a person really believes god with all of his heart if you can trust god with your life then definitely you can trust god with your money also that is why it says this is the principle whatever you withhold is lost if you try to withhold from god it is lost whether your life or with the money if you don't give your life to god and you keep it and you you just say it's my life i'll do what i want with it ultimately you will lose it you will mess it up you will ruin it but when you take your life and give it in the hands of god and say god i place my life into your hands take it and bless it and make me a vessel of blessing unto others your life will be blessed whatever you withhold is lost and whatever is given is blessed that's the principle there so that is why it takes faith to tithe to give the first and the best 10% of all your increase you really need to believe god and his word then only a person will give if a person does not believe god and his word he will never give because he doesn't know <laughs> if i give the first born will i get more or no he doesn't know he only has god's word god's promise so unless you believe god's word and his promise then only a person will give if not he will never give you know jesus was god's tithe jesus was the only begotten son he was the first born of god and he was god's tithe what's the principle the first born has to be sacrificed so that the rest can be redeemed so jesus was sacrificed on the cross of calvary you know why so the rest of humanity can be redeemed isn't that wonderful it's a principle my friend jesus was sacrificed on the cross 
why god's first born one and only begotten son he was sacrificed on the cross so that the rest of humanity can be redeemed that's the principle here and even today it's same we have a classic example of abraham you know why abraham is called the father of faith even though he had to learn faith it took some time for him to learn faith but he learned it and he became the father of faith of all those who believe remember when god told him to take his only son isaac and offer it he did not hesitate <laughs> god didn't wait for him to have 10 sons and then say okay now take your son and offer it no the son of promise isaac was the son of promise and then after giving him the son in an old age in an impossible situation god tells him now abraham take your son and go and sacrifice him abraham does not question god he did not say oh god you only gave me this son <laughs> you said he is a son of promise and now you are telling to kill him if i kill him what will happen how will your promise be fulfilled what will you do no the bible says abraham believed god's word he believed god's promise that even if he killed the son god will raise him up again amen why the only thing that abraham had was god's word and god's promise and i tell you my friend it is the same when we tied today when you take your first and the best 10% of all your increase and when you give it to god the only thing that you have is god's promise that's the only thing that we have you have god's word god has given you his word that when you take the 10% the first and the best and you give it to him god has promised he says try me now prove me now in this and see if i will not open the flood gates of heaven and shower a blessing upon you that you cannot contain and i will fill your barns with plenty it will overflow we have only god's word isn't it that is why it takes faith if you really believe god's word then you will give the first and the best because you know god will honor his word he will fulfill his promise so faith is believing god and acting upon his word whatever god says that is faith so that is why without faith you cannot tide you need to have faith in god you need to have faith in his word then only a person can tide if not he will never tide well i'll just stay with this next week we'll continue shall you all stand this morning Well you're learning something. Well I'm not talking about how I can take away everything from you. <laughs> no no, I'm talking about how you can be blessed. <laughs> I have not chosen to do what I'm doing today. In fact if you ask me, I was against Christianity even though I was born in an RC background raised up in an RC background. I hated Christianity and most of all I hated preachers. <laughs> I hated preachers. I said all preachers are liars. i was dead against preachers but today i am doing the very thing which i didn't like one time god is good my friend i am not telling you these things so that i can get or exploit you no i am telling you so that your life can be changed and you can be tran- transformed i am showing you how god takes a person and blesses him and prospers him in every aspect including financial aspect you don't have to live in a budget <laughs> people talk about budget living well you don't have to my friend the bible doesn't teach about budget living god never placed any limitations upon you no according to your faith let it be done according to you you have faith to believe god is ready he is mighty and awesome in power to do whatever you are able to trust him even in finances so believe god's word don't believe anything else don't allow fear to dominate your life don't be controlled by fear fear always robs you from becoming the best in life fear robs you from becoming what god has intended to be that is why faith is dynamic faith will move mountains faith will change circumstances faith will do things that you thought it you could not do faith is a mighty force it's not some theological teaching no it's a mighty force it will do